Rolex retail and then Rolex resale. Roll out. Rolex roulette. It's kind of very much in the vein of like Hermes where you like pre-spend and have to like build a history, customer relationship with a specific boutique and a sales associate. A roll out. <laughs> Hello. Rolex Russian roulette. I was feeling kind of that like, same pressure you feel like at Hermes when you get offered a bag, any kind of bag, that you have to buy it because it's like, you're lucky enough to get this. A Rolex roll out, Rolex roll out. Watch wizard. Robust Rolex. Re revolving. Reclusive. Re revolving. Rotating Rolex. No. Ravishing Rolexer. No. Rolex Raver. Red Hot Rolex. Really into Rolex. Rolex R Rhino. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm a fashion freak. A shopaholic. Shopaholic. A luxury lover. All the other things. And today we're going to be talking about watches. Rolex, how I got my first Rolex, buying Rolexes, resale, the market, the decline of the market, the increase in the market, all the whole COVID thing, everything that I know, everything I've learned, the process now that I know, and also like getting your dream watch. It's kind of very much in the vein of like Hermes where you like pre-spend and have to like build a history and a clientele, a customer relationship with this boutique, with this specific boutique and a sales associate kind of thing. It's very, it's very similar. So. I'm gonna do a separate video on like similarities, but I mean, whatever. I'm gonna do story time about this one and then I can go into a deep dive later about the whole Rolex buying, selling game and how I got my second one, resale. So Rolex, Rolex retail and then Rolex resale. Rolex retail and then Rolex resale. I'll do two parts. Maybe I'll do three parts. Maybe this is gonna be a three part thing. Sorry, I wanna do parts. Mostly because I just wanna film this really fast and get something out for you guys today and also just tell the story of this one because I think that's gonna be long enough as it is and to go into the detail of the next ones, stay tuned for part two and part three basically. Okay, and come back and follow and like for more. So if that's if you're interested, please stick around, please smash that like button, smash it. Please consider subscribing and keep on watching. Okay, so this is my Rolex Datejust. I will unbox it in a second. This is my Datejust Rolex that I got in New York 2021, almost two years ago. Basically, if you're new here, I love to talk about luxury fashion and usually handbags, luxury handbags and clothes and stuff like that. But watches are something that new that I've kind of gotten into. It's a different game, different level, different thing like that. But basically I'm gonna do a quick recap gist. So of the Rolex resale and retail market and then what's going on now and then what was going on when this happened and then what's going on now. What's going on what happened when this happened and what's going on now and kind of like that, all that. So Basically, COVID 2020, lots of people started buying and selling Rolexes because they weren't working, they knew it had a high resale value and people were just investing, finding different ways to invest their money, so they were investing in Rolexes. So there ended up being a Rolex shortage and people couldn't get their watches and were waitlisting for a long time and stuff like that because people would go and buy them and then just go out, go out and sell them right away. And, and like Rolex does track it. I think there's like something with the serial number or the whatever, they can track it and they can see and they can blacklist you. People were just buying and selling them and selling them for so much more. They were they were making a big profit. So Rolex, I mean, they still make only so many models a year. They, they are very like, you know, hands-on with their, like, it's, you know, very artisan, whatever, like kind of like Hermes bags. It's very just like, it takes time and precision to make one watch, but they do make a lot of watches. For somehow they were just not having watches. And then for like all of 2021, it was just like exhibition only. When you walked into a store, there were no watches available. They just had display models or they didn't even have display models, but they had like 10 people working and you couldn't buy a watch. You could walk in and you couldn't buy a watch. Some people were like a lot, like I, I went in a few times and like somebody before me got a watch and walked out with a bag and then I, and they said they did nothing for me. And maybe they didn't have my model and that person had a different model. But then one time I actually ran into that person later and they said that they, yeah, they got a Yacht Master or something like that. And I didn't ask for that. So obviously, but they were like, they have models in the back. They always have models in the back. They're just selective about who they give it to. And like, if you have the relationship, you build a relationship with it. So you build a relationship with the store because Rolex is like, has authorized dealers. They're not like actual Rolex boutiques. It's like an authorized dealer, like Bob's or like Bindi Jewelers or like Tourneau or like Geary's or like all these places that have, that are authorized to sell Rolex and they buy how many Rolexes they can. You know, I'm gonna go into a deeper one later because I don't, I actually don't think I have the knowledge of wherewithal. All I need to write it all down. So, but basically they make their buy orders from Rolex and say, this is how many we want based on their wish list from their clients. And they keep a long wish list. And there's like wish lists of like 60, 70, 100 people 
for a Submariner or something or for a whatever, for this, for this, for this. And then, so they didn't have anything in 2021 and 2020 because of this resale market, because people were buying and selling and they were trying to be very selective about who they want. So they started doing this thing where you, in order to get like a more, and maybe they've already been doing this, but my knowledge into this world is only in the past couple of years. So they started doing this thing where if you bought a watch, if you wanted to watch like a sub or a GMT or, you know, something that was a really coveted, hard to get watch, you had to first buy another watch, a date just or day date, something like that. Even like, like an Oyster Perpetual, which is like the cheapest, you know, relative, it's like a $5,000 entry level for Rolex. You couldn't just walk in and get that. They would have women's watches available with diamonds or they'd have all gold watches like the day date that's like forty fifty thousand dollars but they wouldn't have the entry level ones and they wouldn't have the submariner which is like 9100 which everyone wants it's the basic it's a you know one with the black dial and like the very rolex rolex watch or any of those gmt's like the coke the pepsi though all those things those are really hard to get so in order to buy that you'd have to buy a date just or something else first and then make your wish list for the second one and kind of build that relationship not only with the store the same store keep going back to the same either store or same company so torno or geary's but even better if you can make the relationship with the same person at the same store so you can make your wish list with that person i went to every rolex i could around me none available no available made a wish list keep checking in, keep showing your face and checking in. Would keep checking in, would never get anything. Would never get anything, never get anything. I don't think my wish list was that hard. It was a date just. I mean, now I want a GMT, but like, I didn't realize you had to buy a date just first, which I didn't know. So, and like, they never had any inventory. It was always out exhibition only, blah, blah, blah. So like, I would go to all these stores. I went to a bunch of stores in California. Like I went to all the stores that I could. None of them had any. I made my wish list. I got an SAS card everywhere. I checked in with them, followed up. Nothing, never. This is 2021. 2022, 2023, now like they have models where they'll call you and they'll tell you you have it, but like, and I'll go into that in the next the next video with the sub. So for this one, so I was trying to get one, I couldn't get one, I couldn't get one, I couldn't get one. And the resale market was really high at the time. Like everything was way over retail. I went to New York just to visit some of my friends in November, 2021. And I was shopping with my friend, Naomi. Hey, hey girl, love you. We are walking around in the meatpacking district. We were going, we went to Hermes to go check it out, but nothing happened there. But then we walked by the Rolex boutique and we were like, oh, let's just walk in. I was like, let's just walk in and see. So we walked in, I was looking around and I was like, oh, there was, you know, the lady was super nice. She was so friendly. And I was like, do you have any watches available? And she's like, actually, we just got eight in. And this is at Tourneau. And Tourneau does sell secondhand and they do sell like, you know, pre-owed, but these were new ones. She's like, we just got eight in. So I was like, oh my God. So we. We tried all of them on. I looked at all of them with her and I'll put I'll interest in videos. These were all the watches that are available. And I was like, well, how do you have these? She's like, we just literally got the shipment in. But usually what happens is they get them in and then they go down their client list and ask, but they can't hold anything. So they can, if anyone walks in and buys it, they can buy it. But at the same time, the people are calling their client list and being like, I have this. Do you want it? If they say no, they go to the next person, go to the next person, go to the next person down the list of the models they had. And they used to be able to send photos. Now they can't even send photos. So you have to actually go in in person. You can't buy over the phone. You can't go in. You can't have it shipped to you, at least for Tourneau, maybe other places are different, but for Tourneau, you can't buy it over the phone, you can't have it shipped to you. Some places, even like like some certain models, you have to pay cash or debit, you can't even pay credit card for certain steel models. Like, I think that's what it's like at the one, there's one of them, I can't remember what the name is. I don't remember the name is, but it's, but anyway, so she was like, you know, these are available, but I can't hold any of them. They might not be available tomorrow. I tried them all on and I was in my like, Peak Shopaholic phase, I had just spent like so much of the Gucci Balenciaga collab because it had just launched and I went to the pop-up and bought so much stuff there. So at the point, at this point, I was like, do I really want this? No, let me think about it. Let me sleep on it and come back tomorrow. So we went home, talked about it, slept, came back, texted her the next day and she was like, four of them are gone. There's only three available. And she sent me the photos. I was like, ah! So I freaked out and I jetted back to there. I was staying in Brooklyn. So I had to jet back all the way back there, get there. I got there, she showed me the three that were available. I literally spent like an hour debating, sending photos, trying on the different ones. The one I really wanted was the plain simple one. That was already gone. There are only three options with diamonds, but I was feeling kind of that same pressure you feel like at Hermes when you get offered a bag, any kind of bag, that you have to buy it because it's like, you're lucky enough to get this. I got this one. I love this one. It's great, it's beautiful, it's amazing. I've worn it a lot, I've gotten a lot of love out of it, but it is a very flashy bag flashy watch and I wouldn't have gotten it if I had actually thought about it because I just felt like I had to get it. I had to get something and I was debating between this one and the purple one with the diamonds, but I like this one better. It was pricier, but it looked nicer and I just thought it was overall better. And, but like going back and reflecting on it now, I feel like I should have done some research and waited and stopped and actually saw, thought about what I wanted because wearing this every day is kind of a lot. 
diamonds every day. It's got diamonds on it all around the diamond. It is a lot. It's a very flashy, loud watch. And I don't love wearing it every day. And I don't, it's like, it is a special occasion watch. I feel like I wear it to like events now, big event kind of things. I don't really wear it every day. Sometimes I wear it while, I'm, sometimes I wear it when I'm feeling like dressed up or going out for something. I've worn it in videos before. I think you guys have seen it and I'll unbox it in a sec, but I just didn't, I don't know. I just felt like I had to get it. Like it was an like urge that I just, it was my shopaholicism and I had just had to get it. And I, and so I, I bought it. And the whole process was really nice. She was very helpful. It was like, take as much time as you want. Like the glove, the thing to try it on, the da -da -da -da, try it different sizes, take photos, video, call people. She gave me so much coffee. Like there was coffee, it was relaxing, <laughs> champagne. They had other models available too. They had like the, 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 the hundred thousand dollar ones with all the diamonds and the gold too. I wasn't going to get any of those. I felt like I had to get this because it was available and I thought there was such a huge shortage and there still is a huge shortage. Now I built this relationship with her in New York. So I texted her the next day. She was like, I have some more if you want to come get more. And I went back and looked at more watches, but I was like, no, I'm not getting two watches right now. And then she would consistently text me and be like, I have these coming in. Do you want any, do you want any, do you want any? I made a wish list with her for a sub a year ago. Still hasn't come in. She's like, it's gonna take time. It's gonna be a long time. There's a very, very long list. And it's like, I don't care. I would rather wait. But I built this relationship with her now, so I have to go back to her or Tourneau in general. There's only one Tourneau. It's in South Coast Plaza, which is an hour and a half from me. So it's a kind of a like a trek to go to, or there's one in Palm Springs. So it's like they're both kind of treks to go to. And I actually went down there a couple months ago, but the store was closed. They had remodeling it, obviously. But I did go and get the service because I did buy the extended warranty that covers all scratches, dings, and everything like that. So I got it serviced, polished. They got rid of all the scratches and the dings. So it's basically brand new now. And I honestly think I'm going to sell it back to them. They have a sellback program. So I might just sell it back to them and then wait for my next watch because I don't, it's too flashy for me. I, I get anxiety about having it. I get anxiety, so much anxiety about having so much stuff in general. And I feel like I need to downsize in general because I have so many bags. I've scattered them in different places. Like I have them in different locations, but like I still have so much. And like, I've been scammed and robbed a few times, robbed both out and about from my car and from my place. So like, I just don't know that, I, I've been thinking a lot of lately about downsizing. And so this is like one of the first things that they haven't downsized. So I think I'm gonna, I called them and I said, I can actually sell it back. So I'm gonna see how much they're gonna offer me and try to sell it back and use the money to buy another watch from them. That's like a little more, hmm, like save some of it and then use a little bit to buy something that's like a little more not. Or just save it because I also, we'll talk about it in a second in another video, but I already got two more watches after this. So I don't need any more watches. I have too many watches and I feel like I need to, this, okay, I'm gonna open it. It is so beautiful. Like it's amazing. It's just, I don't know that I wanna keep it anymore. Okay. So it came out in that package the nice. It's got this little thing that like the box and then it's got its little card right here and this little like certified thingy here. Yeah, so like also the trouble with this is like now I have a relationship with her. So every time I want a watch, I have to go there. I can go to the Torno here, but I tried to go and build a connection with someone, but there was no one, they, they don't, it's not opening again until November. So I don't even have anyone here. So it's like, I don't know, but I am gonna go and build a relationship with the one here too, but it's just kind of far. Like there is a, there's a few stores that are much closer to me and be a lot easier for me to pop into. And so I feel like I wanna build my journey with them, but then building my journey with them, I'm starting fresh all over again. Basically I can't, I'd have to get a day just or something else before they're gonna offer me something else. And the, the one is the one near me also has Patek or Patek, Patek Philippe, Patek, Patek, whatever it is. And they were like, you can also start your journey here with this. We're booked out until 2024. You can't get anything this year. The one here close to me, like I went to a couple of Geary's. They had like a few, same thing, like diamondy watches or like, they had the models that they wanna push out basically. And they wanna get rid of the ones that aren't selling as well. The hard to sell ones they're saving for their VIP clients or their whatever and they're or not, whatever. And they want you to build that relationship and have a few watches before they give you the holy grail watch in case you are reselling. And so you have all, you're stuck with all this dead weight before you can get that, right? Or whatever. Or they think that you want you to build a collection. But the guy here nearby is really nice and I really like him and I, I want to build a long-term relationship. Like I could see me working with him for years and years and years. And he said it's going to be 2024 for at least, at least earliest for a paddock. AP is so different. They're just so chill. There's no wait list. And Paddock's the same thing. You have to buy one of these before you can get offered, you know, one of their nicer watches. It's Nautilus, right? I like the Calatrava. I would be fine with the Calatrava. That's their entry-level watch, which is like $25,000. Still a lot for a watch. A lot for a watch. AP, I went last week and they were like, I have a Jules Audemars, which is like an older AP watch that I bought resale. I didn't buy it from the store. I bought it from Fashion File. This was like my first watch purchase. I also bought it like a couple of years ago too. AP, they're like, just come in, tell us what you want and we will get it for you. It will take time. There's no wait list. There's no like going through hoops of like buying something else, 
pre-spending or whatever, you, like you get the bet watch you want when it comes in, when we have one for you. But it might take six months, it might take a year, it might take whatever amount of time. So come and make the wish list. So I'm gonna go do that and make my wish list with them. Oh, I don't really need to get another watch right now. I just literally, okay, no, I'm not gonna do that. I mean, I am, but I'm not. <sighs> this is the problem, this is my main shopaholic problem because I literally wanna get rid of this to downsize and then I'm just gonna go get another watch. I need to start downsizing, I'm gonna start downsizing. Okay, you know what, I'm gonna start downsizing at the end of the year, after, after, I have a couple more bags coming in and I have another Paris trip and I bought a bag online in Paris. So after all that, then I will reevaluate. I'll stop buying for a little bit and I will start enjoying all the things that I have. Like half the stuff just stays in the box. I never even use it, right? So I need to start reevaluating that and I need to also downsize and get rid of some stuff. Yes, I need to do that. I need to do that. I don't know how I'm gonna do that. I don't know if I'm gonna like resale or what, but I, I do need to do it. Or maybe I won't need to do it. I don't wanna get in trouble for selling. So I, I don't know how to do it to actually not get in trouble. Do you guys know how I can do that without getting in trouble from the boutiques for selling stuff that I don't want anymore? I don't really mind about Goyard because Goyard, like they already hate me. So if I sell some of their stuff, I don't care. But I have been very mad with them about not selling. So I don't know. But then like Chanel and Hermes, it's really hard. Louis Vuitton, I don't think they care, but I don't know. Okay, that's a whole other video. I haven't decided yet. So don't take this the wrong way. I'm not selling. Okay, great. Disclaimer. Okay, anyway, so, and then it comes with, flipping back to this, it comes with a booklet and then the little certificate with the date and the serial number and the model number. It's so nice. I do love it. Like I said, I've worn it a bunch of times. But so this is what I got. I got in a 36 millimeter date just with rose gold and oyster steel with a diamond bezel and like a brown, a slate dial and Jubilee. I love the Jubilee. I wanted Jubilee. I was really happy. I think that's also why I picked this because the other one didn't have Jubilee. The other ones didn't have Jubilee. I really wanted the Jubilee. I really like the Jubilee. But I'm also feeling like Rolex is also like now very flashy. Like people have getting robbed and hurt. That's another reason. Yeah, that is another main reason. People are getting like robbed on Rodeo in Beverly Hills for their watches, for their Rolexes. Then again, AP and AP and Patek would probably be even worse. So I think I need to get like a subtle, simple, like not so flashy watch, which I, my AP, my Jewels on Mars is not a very expensive watch. Doesn't resale for a lot. It's very simple. It's just a plain watch with a leather band and like a little bit of gold and a white. And it's so simple and I love it. And it's, it's understated. And I'm actually really happy with that watch. So I think that's just gonna be my watch. I will have to get rid of these two other ones eventually, soon. I don't know how I'm gonna get rid of this. Well, yeah, I'm gonna send this to Torno and I'm gonna send the other one to, to Torno too, I think. So I'm gonna give them back to both to Torno. That one I didn't get from Torno, but this one I did. I know I'm all over the place. So this, I really did like, but yeah, it feels very flashy. It feels just like, it's almost stressful for me when I wear it because I feel like it's gonna get scratched. And it got so scratched up and I got it polished and cleaned and now it has no scratches on it. So it literally is like a brand new watch. So that's kind of what it looks like. It's got, yeah, they don't tell you any of the carrots or the diamonds or anything like that. I mean, it's very beautiful. It's like. I could also keep this and pass it down. Maybe I should just like put it in a safe and like a safety deposit box and pass it down. Maybe I shouldn't sell it. But who am I passing it down to? I don't have any kids and I'm not anywhere near a relationship. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this yet. I haven't decided, but I wanted to tell you the story about this and how I feel about it right now. So how I feel about it right now is I don't really know that I wanna keep it, but I might keep, I might still keep it. Knowing me, I might not sell it. Okay, Rolex Datejust Oyster Perpetual. 36 millimeters, ever rose gold, all this thing. It's like, it's so beautiful. I really do like that it's, and I like that it was rose gold because it, you know, all my other jewelry is rose gold for the most part. And I love rose gold. It's a little bit different than Cartier's rose gold. Like it's a little more pink, it's more pink gold, but I really, really, I don't know. I just, I can't get rid of this. I can't get rid of this. Ugh, it's too pretty. Okay, I'm just gonna have to put this in safe or something like that. Okay, well, so yeah, that's what happened with that. So now I like check in with her every couple of months. So I check in with her like every couple of months to see what else she has. But I guess the whole process is now. So now I think since 2021, 2022, 2023, the resale market has gone down. And so people are not like as crazy about selling them and buying them. And also like the resale, the, the price resale, you can buy them under retail. The real world has so many now, they're like oversaturated with them. And now you can get a good, decent deal on a used one. Chrono 24, oh, maybe I should try Chrono 24. Okay, anyway, so yeah, it's just, it's not the easiest thing to, to sell. So now the market's gone down, it's a little less saturated, but you still walk into the store, they never have anything. It is a little easier. So like my friend has tried a few times in 2023, gotten offered multiple date justs from every single store. Every single store is now given a date just offer. They have date just available in a couple of weeks. 
sometimes in a couple of days, like they have them available. So I think that the stock is coming back. I think they opened some new manufacturing things, just like Hermes, they make open new manufacturing things. And it is getting a little easier to get them if you want to date just. The harder to get models, still harder to get. And I still, you still have to build a relationship. So sum of it up, basically, it's like you have to pre-spend and buy it for certain other things in order to get offered the thing you want. The harder to get models, the ones that do sell for a lot. They just, I guess, are not as like, whatever. So I don't know, that's my Rolex roulette. A Rolex roulette, yeah, because I just picked one. I was like, I, had, I felt like I had to. Russian roulette, I had to buy it. I was being forced to, and I just got it. And I loved it, and I love it, and I do like it. And I just wanted to do a little quick story about it, talk about it, and it's kind of it. Yeah, this video is already way too long, so I'll do a second video with more about. If you guys have questions about it, let me know in the comments below. I can go into any detail about anything I've experienced with waiting and stuff like that. Like I made wish lists, followed up, like people didn't respond for, like I, I got like, if you, if you say no, they like don't, if you say no to something you asked for, then they kind of like don't follow up with you anymore. I don't know, I can, I can talk more about it. And I'll talk about buying the second watch, which was a sub on the gray market. Bought you new gray market sub 2023 from a certified gray market dealer person. That can be next video. Okay, that's all I got, okay. Yay, okay, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. Please smash that like button. Please be share with your friends and family. If you hate it, share with your enemies, nexus. I know your time is valuable. I know your time is precious. So I appreciate you spending your time here with me. A roll out, a Rolex, a roll out. All right, let's roll out. I'll see you guys later, bye.